rate of change. Hopefully you did a bit of research. The rate of change is how quickly something changes when something else changes, yeah? And quite often, the independent variable, the x value, will be time, yeah? A rate of change, something happening as time progresses. So if a line goes up, we have a positive rate of change. It means time progressing makes something increase. So we've got positive, positive. What's the difference between three compared to one and two? It starts with zero with two, but it goes down. Okay. So these are both positive, but they are what we say, it is a constant rate of change. Okay? Constant. This one is still positive, but we can say it's varying. Its rate of change is changing, and it is actually increasing. Okay, so as they said here, I don't know whether it's quite zero, it might be. Okay, but then the rate of change increases a little bit, and then here the rate of change is a bit more. Up here, the rate of change is really fast. So at this value of x, zero, we have the lowest rate of change. This value of x, it's slightly higher. This value of x is higher. This value of x is higher still. Okay. This is a negative and constant. This one is negative constant, negative constant. This one is zero rate of change. Max, does that mean nothing's happening if it's a zero rate of change? Okay. Start changing. Something's not changing. Now, here's an interesting link to physics. Okay. The reason why you can't feel the motion of the planet spinning is because... Gravity goes at the same speed. Because your speed is not changing. Your body is not designed to feel speed. Your body is designed to feel change in speed. So you will feel acceleration. You will feel it when you accelerate negatively or decelerate. Slow down, right? If you're in a car. If you're in a, an aeroplane, lovely smooth flight, can you even tell you're moving? No. Because you're just at that. You are going at a constant speed. There is zero rate of change. That's what that would look like. And that's the kind of thing about that people go, oh, we're, we're not on a planet that's spinning and going through because we're doing this at 600,000 kilometers an hour. But yeah, but it doesn't change, so you can't feel it. Physics. Okay. So, looking at a question like this, we know we have three sections. This section is one rate of change. Uh, this section is a different rate of change, and this section is a third rate of change. What we do know is this one is positive, this one is, and this one is negative. Now, this was the important thing that I hope everyone got. When x is 1, that's its value of whatever it is. Let's say it's speed. That's time, that's speed. It's going at two kilometers an hour. Okay? Or it has traveled two kilometers in one hour, let's say. Better. It has traveled four kilometers in two hours. But what can we say about its speed? It's constant. And it's always two. So how do we work out that two kilometers per hour? Well, the rate of change is the gradient of the line, which is the change in y, dy, which is 4, dx, which you haven't seen on the sheet because I'm extending it here, no reason, that's 2. So rise over run or dy over dx is 4 over 2, which is 2. 
Let's just compare when x is 1. Well, let's say we did a little triangle there instead. It would just be 2 over 1, which is still 2. So anywhere along this line, the rate of change is 2. Hang on, what about this point? What's it there? 2. There? There? Good. What about here? One, because this is a separate section, so we have to go rise over run. Well, that is two over two, which is one for that section. And then this one is, we should, here's a little tip for you to always make it correct. Always do your run first. Your run is always left to right because that is time, let's say. Time never comes backwards. So we should always go left to right. And then we have to go down. So this is where we know the run is 2, but the rise is negative 2, because we're going down rather than up. So for the third section, it's negative 2 over 2, which is negative 1. Ben, what about here? What, what's the gradient? Still negative one, okay? Shy, what's the gradient here? What's the rate of change here, Sam? Yeah. What's in? One, thank you for valuing that, yeah. Okay, straight lines, RA. Constant rate of change. Rate of change is when one variable changes with respect to the other. Now, an instantaneous rate of change is what I've just been doing with you. But an average rate of change is when we have to consider what happened when I went from zero all the way to six. Okay, it's not constant, right? This is where we would have the average rate of change. And we would still do rise over run, but ignoring what happened in the middle and just looking at the beginning point and the end point, right? The beginning was here, end was here. Let's ignore the details and just go for the average. The average is... 4 over 6. So my average rate of change equals 4 over 6, which simplifies to 2 over 3. Okay? So that's the difference between your instantaneous ones, where your instantaneous is just whatever the rate of change is for that whole line segment, but an average would be between the two points and you ignore the details. Sorry, yeah, it should be six. I did write it there, four over six. Okay. Just out of interest then. What situations in real life have a rate of change? So we've done speed is a change in distance to time. The tap thing, how fast a bottle fills up. We were just talking about what happens at the end of filling a bottle of water up when it goes into its narrow neck, what happens to you? Yeah. Rate of change goes up because it goes quicker and it suddenly spurts out if you're not careful. Got it. Stops, how it's changing over time. We tend to have a trend line. It does this in between, but we have a general trend line. Money made per hour. Volume, yeah. Filling something up again. Anything else? Now, looking at your sheet, this is where this is going to be applied in real life. This is something we'll talk about next time. It's not really necessary for now, but look at these questions. This is, tells you all the times when a rate of change is involved. The cost for something. To be made 
how much money you make when it's sold. The big links to business and stuff. Funny that you know why I'm looking at it. You're not looking at what I'm asking you to look at. Okay, so all of these things can represent rates of change and stuff. And this is what we need to get into this unit. But do we have a reasonable idea now of what a rate of change is? Okay, we know what gradient is. What do you think? I'll, I'll wait for people to pack up now. I think Max is so annoying when they do that. And it disrupts our learning, you guys. Um, how do you think that matches to that other activity? What do you think we're going to be making a link between? Change and therefore the table of values and the, the equation. The gradient and the rate of change has a significant say. The rate of change has a significant impact on what the equation is that we need to understand. That's why it's important. Anyway, enjoy lunch. Bye.